This episode is going to be about everything that I spend money on to keep my blog up and running. And that blog, as of today, is worth about $20,000. I want to be able to compress the seven years or so, the blogging knowledge that I have into this short and quick snapshot of the overhead that you might need to run your blog as well. Now, these are business expenses. I'd be lying if I'd say that you didn't need at least some capital in order to run your blog or run your online business. Business. But to be honest, any online business, any reputable business, to be honest, takes money in order for it to keep it up and running. I am also going to compare the needs versus the wants, the things that you might not necessarily need to keep your blog up and running and things that you definitely will need in order to keep your blog up and running. So let's discuss. And welcome to the Blogger Revolution. My name is Chris and here we talk about building passive income streams that work for you so you don't have to. Welcome, what a wonderful week that we've had so far. I know I've had a great week. I was able to play golf twice this week, so I'll always take that. But I am a little sore, but we're gonna keep pushing on nonetheless. If you're listening to us um, over on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, welcome, glad to have you here. If you're watching us on YouTube, wonderful to have you here as well. Please be sure to leave us a comment just saying hi, or if you have any questions, please let me know. But let's go ahead and jump right into the money that you need to run an official online blog. I remember when I first got started doing this blogging thing, I didn't want to spend any money on anything at all because I was broke at the time, just to be honest. And because of that, I didn't have a ton of money to invest in this tool and in that tool. So I had to be very bare bones as to what I needed to get everything running. But over the years, I've paid for a lot of stuff that I didn't need. And I've paid for a lot of stuff that I definitely did need. And I want to be able to cut through the noise for you and give you exactly what you would need to get your blog up and running. And I want to show you what I've been working on with my Project Colvin site, the expenses that I've had with it so far in terms of keeping it running, and what you need versus what you may just want. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So number one, this is an absolute need. This is the hosting. All right, You need to absolutely positively have hosting for your site. Now, just to be a little clear, hosting is just where your site lives. All right, Think about it as your what your uh, your house or your apartment or wherever you happen to be living, that's going to be the hosting. It's what houses your couch and your TV and your kitchen and your bathroom. That's what hosting is. It's basically holding on everything that our site is. Everything from the articles to the category pages to the pictures to everything is in that hosting. But here's something that I want to make sure that you are completely aware of: hosting. Not all hosting is created equal. So. Please, by all means, do not go out there and buy the cheapest hosting. And that's a, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, if you get really cheap hosting, it is a headache, when, especially when things don't work out well. Especially if you log into your site one day and it's just not working. If you have to send in an email because it's after hours, your site's going to be down this entire time. Our website's are our business and it needs to be up 24 hours a day. Otherwise, we are going to be losing money. Another reason why it's super important to make sure that you do not go with the cheapest hosting is because you save a ton of time when you actually have help to build all of the technical stuff that you have to worry about when it comes to a host. Um, customer service needs to be outstanding. I mean, outsta- out of this world. And one of my favorite ones that I use, it's called WPX Hosting. Now, WPX has this ridiculous response time when it comes to their customer service. I'm talking... I believe it's uh, around 30 seconds or less that they always respond to you no matter what. This is going to help in so many different ways because anytime you have a problem with something technical on your site, instead of Googling it and then trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to do? And then testing it out and then seeing if it works and then maybe it doesn't work. Instead of wasting all of that time, you just kind of (laughs) set up a quick thing, uh, set up a chat with WPX, all of a sudden you're talking with somebody in less than 20 or 30 seconds and they're helping you fix your problem. So it's really, really outstanding. In fact, I'll be sure to put a link down in the description for you to go give uh, WPX Hosting a try. It is a 50% off coupon. So if you do sign up with WPX and give them a try, I believe you'll get a 50% off for the first month of the service there. Totally worth it. Um, another huge thing that I noticed recently is uh, you can avoid, you can avoid something that's called invalid traffic. Now, I had a student in uh, Blog Builder Pro just a little while ago, 
he got denied monetization. He was trying to put ads onto his site and uh, they kept denying him saying, no, you, you can't put ads because you're getting bad traffic to your site, invalid traffic. And we couldn't really figure out what was causing the issue. So we moved his hosting from, I forgot exactly where it was, but we moved it to WPX. And literally within like a day or two after doing that, he reapplied and got approved for, uh, for ads. So whatever WPX is doing extra <laughs> to make sure that they're blocking, you know, bad or what they were calling invalid traffic to the site. It, it ended up turning his site from not making very much money at all to actually making a decent amount um, passively without really having to work too much on it from the traffic that he was already getting to the site. So boom, you know, another big reason why WPX is a great hosting, but it doesn't just have to be WPX. It can be any shared managed hosting that uh, is going to take care of you, especially when things break and inevitably things will break with our businesses. So another need for your blog would be your domain, all right? The domain is the name of your website. It's the address that people use to get to your website. Like google.com is a domain. Uh, Microsoft.com is a domain. So if we were it's just to stay with this whole house example, if hosting is your house where everything is being kept, then the, the, then the domain is the address to that house. Okay, the domain is the address to that house. So you must have a personalized domain. It needs to be yours, one that you own, that nobody else owns, and is yours 100%. So if you have a website, I know a lot of people who have blogs and they say, oh yeah, my blog is, you know, chris123.blogger.com or something like that. If your site has that many dots in it, it's probably not your website, okay? You might be posting on it. You might be putting articles and stuff on it, but... If anything were to ever happen, that dot blogger dot com or dot wix dot com or whatever it happens to be, they can get rid of your site at any moment whenever they felt like if they just didn't like you or if you sneezed wrong or something like that. It can be something completely out of your control, but they can take it because they ultimately own your site and the content that's up there. Is it fair? No, it's not. It's not fair at all. But that's just the way it is when you're trying to go to 100 percent cheap route. Now, buying a domain is insanely cheap the one that uh the place that i use to buy a lot of my domains is called namecheap.com again link will be put down in the description not an affiliate or anything of theirs it's just a good service to use but namecheap.com you can get domains there for about eight dollars yeah eight dollars and that's for the year and you won't have to worry about renewing it for an entire 12 months and then after that i think it renews for maybe 12 or 15 dollars if that. But if you got eight bucks, you can get a personalized domain for you. Now, those were two needs so far. Let's go ahead and jump to a want. Now, let me just define what a want is. So a want is something that I definitely would normally go with when I'm building up a niche site or a blog. That doesn't mean that you have to do it, all right? But it's definitely a recommendation because it does make life a little easier at times, and it definitely will help with growing your site faster. At least I think so. So the number one want, or this is actually number three in our list. So the number three thing that is a want would be a premium theme, all right? So there are many, like thousands of different types of themes out there. A lot of them are free. A lot of them are paid. A lot of them are have that freemium model, meaning it's free to get in and you can use it for a while. But if you want to get some extra little modular movements and get this looking that way, get that looking this way, then you're going to have to pay in order to uh, be able to get those additional features. So one that I use specifically is Astra Pro. Um, I've been using Astra Pro now for about a year and it's been an amazing experience, I, I must say. Um, I'm also used to using other ones such as Thrive Theme. Teams. It makes it so much easier to be able to build beautiful landing pages. But for a niche site, you don't necessarily need Thrive Themes unless you're also going to be collecting email addresses, which we'll talk about later in this episode. So uh, some other ones that you can use, uh, Astro Pro works great. They have a free version as well. But Generate Press is a good one as well. Um, I'm even testing out Cadence at the moment. A lot of people are using Cadence and they are loving it with how fast it happens to be. Um, in this day and age, a lot of people are trying to get away from page builders and just trying to stick with the, the most plain version of, 
um, WordPress or Gutenberg as you possibly can so that we can pass Core Web Vitals and make sure our sites are lightning fast, especially when we're putting ads and stuff on our sites. So the prices can vary for how much a lot of these page builders happens to be and these themes. Um, it can range anywhere from free to about $50 or $60 to be able to get either a one-year license or even a lifetime license with some of these, or you can go upwards of over 300 bucks a year. It just depends on what that you're look, what you're looking for and what you are trying to accomplish. With the free versions, I will say that you can get a lot of mileage out of the free versions. Give the, uh, the, the premium ones, the ones that you have to pay for in terms of themes, you don't always have to go with one. You can go with something free until you're making enough money to be able to reinvest to make your website look nicer or to make your website um, be more engaging when people are landing on it. So the number four thing, this is going to be the want, another want item, and that's going to be a plugin called Link Whisper. Now, this has quickly become one of my favorite plugins to use in terms of using uh, a new, uh, not really a new thing, but a thing called internal linking. Now, internal linking is super, super important for your website, especially in terms of engagement and growth for your site itself. Now, there's a few things that um, you may need to know about internal linking. Number one, let's get into what it is so that we're all sure that we're on the same page here. So number one, internal linking is just linking from one article to the next on your exact same site. So we're not linking out to Wikipedia, we're not linking out to some other authoritative resource, just another article within our site itself. That's what internal linking does. So when you're linking from one site to the next, Google can see that information. They can see that, oh, they linked to this article or they linked to that article. Now imagine if you had one article and you had 30 or 40 other articles on your site and they all linked to that one article. That's a clear sign to Google that that one article must be pretty important, which means uh, you would have a better chance at ranking that article because now all of the link equity or the link juice that might be coming from these other articles are now pointing to this one, which is going to help prop it up. It helps amazingly. It really does because it's something that we can also control. And this is what Link Whisper helps us with. It makes the process of internal linking so much simpler, like 100% simpler, because it uses what's called NLP or I think it's natural language processing, where it can read a site and figure out what's Im the important words on that site and then link it to other articles for you and then offer it to you as a suggestion for an internal link. And you just check a box, hit go, and it immediately just adds the link for you. Again, 100% of a want because you can do this process manually. So um, Link Whisper is an amazing um, plugin that I've been using for a while now, and I definitely recommend that you get it. It is about $77 a year uh, to use the Link Whisper plugin. That's only for one website. If you have multiple websites, you can stack it and get it a little cheaper per website. Um, but to give you a little bit of a break, I do have a promo code that you can use. Benji's Dad, all one word, that's Benji's Dad. I'll be sure to put a link down in the description as well for this, and you'll get 15 dollars off like 15 bucks off of that 77 making it a lot more reasonable in terms of uh being able to pick it up right he right here and right there so go check it out use promo code benji's dad for link whisper it's one of my favorite plugins that i use every single day when posting articles all right so another want this is the fifth thing on our list another want that uh you don't necessarily need but it can be super duper helpful would be deposit photos or really any type of uh, stock photo site to be able to get images to put on your blog posts. Um, now remember this, you can always, always, always take your own pictures. You don't necessarily need to get stock imagery or anything like that to put onto your article because if you are in the niche, you're practicing regularly within your niche and it really, you may not need it because you can just take the pictures as you're participating in your particular niche. Um, I do that for one of my golf sites. So when I go out golfing, I take a couple of snapshots. Then when I get back home, I just upload them to my computer, put them on the website and boom, free and it's a unique image. So the good thing about a place like Deposit Photos is that you own the rights to the image. Now you do have to be 100% careful when you just go to Google and just type an image of whatever just so, and just so that you can have something to plop onto the website. Because if you don't own the uh, the rights to that image, 
it can and probably will cause you a problem sometimes much further down the line. The cool thing about using a place like Deposit Photos is that anytime you use an image, you are now licensed that image, as in there's a document that you can print out and give to them and say, hey, I rightfully own this image to use in this context. And you can pull it up at any time. So it doesn't matter if I uh, bought a photo from Deposit Photos three years ago or, you know, if I did it five years ago, you know, they're always going to have a copy of that license that I can download. And if someone says, hey, I took their image, hey, this license says otherwise. Um, the dashboard keeps track of all of those things. So I never have to keep track of them really myself. Um, another benefit of using a place like Deposit Photos is it's easier to find uh, pictures faster and they're usually better quality than something that you might find on some of these free places to find uh, photos. Now there's a million places that you can go to find free photos for a blog, such as Pixabay, Morg Files. I can't really think of too many more, but there's, a, there's about seven or eight of them that I've used regularly, um, especially in the past when I was first getting started. But sometimes you, because those images are free, everybody is using them. So the picture that you find isn't going to be a very unique image. Um, now, if through, you know, just naturally, if someone is paying deposit files in order to use a particular image, no doubt, you know, fewer people are going to be paying to have access to that image, which means you're going to have a more unique picture. Not saying that you'll never see that picture on the internet anywhere else, but it's going to be a lot slimmer because you have to, you have to pay in order to use that image. Now, in terms of price, usually these, these uh, image websites, you know, are pretty pricey in some instances, but if you keep your, your head on a swivel, right, you're always looking around for good deals, places like uh, Deposit Photos, always has some deals that are going on that you can sign up for and get some really, really cheap images. Now, just recently, Deposit Photos was on AppSumo and they had uh, images for 39 cents. That's a steal if I ever heard of one. All right, 39 cents per image. I think I stocked up around a five or 600 of those images and I won't have to worry about getting an image anywhere for a while because Deposit Photos has everything that I need. Um, now that has uh, since been gone. It's no longer on AppSumo. Keep an eye on AppSumo. It's one of my favorite places to always get some really good deals on software to run my business. But as of right now, I know Deposit Photos has a deal that you can check out where uh, it's 100 images for $100. So a dollar an image, which actually is still another great deal. If you were to buy these images individually, you're probably going to pay anywhere from 3 to $7 per image, which is and that's pricey, right? It definitely is pricey. So definitely give Deposit Photos a try. Link will be in the description for them as well. Now, this next one, no longer a want. Let's jump back into the need. Short Pixel. All right, Short Pixel is an image compression software. Now, if you have a slow website, nine times out of 10, the reason your site is so slow is because the images are too big. You need to be able to make these images smaller in terms of uh, size and megabytes so that when people visit your site, the images pop up very, very fast. Um, anytime you're doing any type of speed test with your website, always think about the person who lives in the middle of nowhere that's getting one bar trying to download your website. That's where Google is trying to make sure that those people are satisfied as well. Not just the people who are at home on Wi-Fi. They're going to get a fast site regardless of how big your site is in most cases. Um, another benefit of using a, um, a program like Short Pixel is it will give you what are called next gen formats for your images. So uh, if you remember, images can be found in things like JPEGs. You know, those are some very old file formats that in this new day and age of um, web browsers like Chrome and Firefox and Safari, you know, they'd rather a new form of uh, image compression that's called WebP. Now, Short Pixel is extremely affordable. I must say they are extremely affordable. For $9.99, you can get 10,000 image credits. That's a pretty decent amount. And if you're just getting started with blogging, chances are, you know, $9.99 for 10,000 images, you won't have to worry about buying any further image compression software for at least a little while until your site starts to make some money. So uh, definitely Short Pixel is a need. You definitely need it if you want your site to be fast and we need our sites to be fast for them to be able to rank number one in Google, which is what the whole point is, right? Okay, so the next 
tool that I definitely recommend is a want that you don't necessarily have to pay for, but it would be helpful if you did, is the AAWP table plugin. Now, this is a table plugin that you put um, in a blog post to kind of showcase whatever it is that you're talking about. Now, AAWP is specifically for Amazon products. You can punch in the Amazon code in each one of these tables and it'll pull the information from Amazon and present it on your website. The best part about this entire thing is that it's 100% approved by Amazon. You wanna play by Amazon's rules. Uh, you can compare different products. So let's just say you have a um, an article on your site that talks about the best you know, cell phones. And you might list, these are the top five cell phones that are available that you need to give a try. You can also highlight different products within that table. So one can be like, this is the best value pick right here and you can make it a specific color. But this one might be, you know, this is our pick, the one that you should probably go with because it's just that awesome. This is great for affiliate articles, but it can also be used for informational articles as well, as long as it's helpful. Don't just throw it in there just for no reason whatsoever. It needs to reference a product that you're probably already talking about within that post, all right? So the pricing for AAWP is about $50 for one site. Uh, if you're, again, if you have multiple sites, you can get it a little bit cheaper, but $50 a year isn't too bad for what you're able to get with it over the long uh, period of time. The next thing is a need. Now, this one's a little controversial. This one's a little debatable, but I definitely recommend a, a product that can capture email addresses. Now, the one that I like to use is called ConvertBox. I've been testing this now for about six months, and oh my goodness, it is an amazing a plugin that makes it so simple to add things like pop-ups to your site so that you can start uh, pushing affiliate offers or you can start capturing people's email addresses uh, very, very easily. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Well, Chris, I hate pop-ups. Every time I go to a website, all I do is see pop-ups. Why would I want to put that onto your website? I totally get it. Totally understand. But I will tell you this, even though most people seem to hate them, they still work to this day. The reason why you see them all the time is because they work. If they didn't work, then you wouldn't see them <laughs> very much at all. We added ConvertBox to that website and revenue jumped 30% overnight. Revenue jumped 30% overnight. It's, it's definitely worth it to give it a try. Um, it's very easy to use, very easy to design the pop-ups or the full page landing pages that can pop up with it. Um, another cool thing that we used recently on the Project Colvin case study with ConvertBox was quizzes. We were able to ask the people who are landing on our site what they're interested in. Why are they on our site? What can I do to help them further? Which I could then take this information and turn it around and figure out exactly, okay, what do they need? What do they want? Now I can go try to satisfy that so that I can now find a way to try to make some money from it as well. Using these quizzes, I was able to get a lot of information from my audience in a very short period of time. Now, pricing for ConvertBox, it's a little up there. It's $495, but it is one time, as in you never need to pay for it again. One time, $495, and you are in there for life. It's a lifetime deal that seemingly is always available. They reserve the right to take it down at any point, and they're always threatening that on their website. So um, I'll leave a link down in the description that you can check out, and you click it, and you'll go see exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, four ninety five dollars one time, and even though I'm mentioning the price now, that doesn't mean that it won't change in the future, but definitely another plugin that I recommend. Now, if you have a a program like ConvertBox that you are using to capture email addresses on your website, you will need to find a way to email those people who are now on your email list. You can't just capture the emails and then just never do anything with them. You have to be able to keep those people on your email list engaged, and you do so by automatically sending them emails. The program that I like to use as another need would be Active Campaign. Now, Active Campaign is an email autoresponder, as in when people uh, join your email list, you can set up a list of emails that automatically send every day, every week, every hour, or whatever you feel like for your particular website. This is really what makes your website as passive as possible. If you're selling a site and you say that you have a 
email list with a thousand people who are very engaged, that can go from that can make your site go from a 30 to 35 X multiple to a 40 to 45 X multiple. You can make a lot more money by having an email list versus not having an email list. Now, there are other free autoresponders out there that you can use, such as MailChimp, which gives you a free amount of emails up to a certain amount. But the one that I like to use again is Active Campaign. Um, $9 a month to use Active Campaign. That's not too bad of an investment usually for the return that you will get by being able to email people passively. Now you can be out there in the world, whatever you feel like doing, if you're sitting on a beach drinking Mai Tais or whatever, now your website's running, collecting emails and emails are automatically being sent, which means people are clicking on your offers. And if people are clicking on your offers, you are most likely making some money. So definitely one thing that um, I would definitely need to get in order to give your websites up and running and uh, making money faster and passively. Now, the number 10 thing that I definitely recommend is a want. This isn't a need. It's definitely a want. And that's a program called Phrase.io. Now, Phrase is quite possibly becoming one of my favorite tools when it comes to writing content for my site. It is an SEO optimization plugin. It also uses what's called NLP, kind of similar to Link Whisper, uh, Natural Language Processing, which... Yeah. Let me try to explain it this way. So Google is a computer. That's what they're, they're not an actual human being. It's a computer. So when it reads the content on your blog, it's reading it in a certain way. It can't read for comprehension, at least not yet. Right. They can't read for comprehension, but they can pull out specific words based on what it is you're you're talking about and ascertain what it is that article is about. So for an example, if you ever watched an old TV show, uh, The Simpsons, you know, let's just say you wrote an article about The Simpsons. You couldn't write that article unless you use words like Springfield or Lisa or Bart or Homer or Marge. You would have had to use those words somewhere in that article. So when Google sees that article, they're looking for those types of keywords. OK, I can if they just say Springfield, but then they also see Homer, Marge and Bart, then they'll know for sure. that OK, this Springfield is talking about the Springfield in the fictitious world of The Simpsons. Google can figure that out just by natural language processing, looking at that article, seeing what words exist, and then being able to uh, deduce what that article happens to be about. So that's what Google uses to figure out what an article is about. Now, phrase.io does something very similar. They will look at the top 10 to 20 articles that automatically pull up when you Google a particular phrase. It will read all 10 to 20 of those articles and then it will use NLP to figure out what words are popping up most often within those articles. This will then let you know what words and topics you need to cover in your article to make sure that you are on point for what the search intent is for that particular phrase. Now, I know I got a little bit technical right there, but just to make this a little more simple, Phrase.io tells you what to put in your articles so that you can rank better on Google. So Phrase is another one of my favorite tools you definitely should try. Um, it is about $44 per month to use. That'll give you 30 articles that you can create using their software. Um, if you want, I do have a free coupon that you can check out in the description as well that will give you a 60% discount on the first month of Phrase. I definitely recommend it because I believe getting 60% off will make it about $17 for the first month and you'll get 30 credits in terms of searches that you can create your articles for. Just to sum up the 10 things that we just went over, again, some of these things are needs and some of these things are wants. The needs are stuff like hosting and a domain. And if you just went bare bones with this and tried to keep your costs as low as possible, you can easily, easily run a website for about 20 to 30 bucks a month. That's nothing compared to running an entire business, right? 20 or $30 per month. Now, if you went with all the bells and whistles, some of the things that we talked about in this uh, episode, and you got almost everything that we included, you're probably going to be spending anywhere from $70 to $80 per month, which actually is still outstanding. You know, it's still amazing because the profit margins within blogging and niche sites are so high because you can run a site for so low and make so much money with it. That's why I believe that blogging is probably the greatest uh, option that is out there in terms of creating a passive income online. Regardless, whatever you decide to do, you know, take these things as a, a grain of salt. Decide what works for you. 
decide what you would like to uh, reinvest in your business and then make a decision as to whether or not you should uh, buy these recommendations or not. So uh, if you would like some a little bit of help in building up your website to getting good traffic in it, if you're struggling to get traffic, if you're struggling to monetize it or, or anything, then I want you to go check out a free workshop that I have over at bloggerevolution.com slash workshop. That's bloggerevolution.com slash workshop. Um, if you have about an hour or so a day, you can definitely build a blog, build a business, a passive income source that's going to pay you for years and years to come. If you're sick of your nine to five, like I was sick of my nine to five because I wasn't spending enough time with my family, man, this is what you need to be doing. All right. So go ahead, give it a try. It's 100% free to go check out the workshop over at bloggerrevolution.com slash workshop. Again, link down in the description as well. 